Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixing Publishing, and today we have something fun to do. We're going to respond to one of our viewers who asked us if we would be able to do a video on reduced graphene oxide. So on today, we have Adrian Nixon with us, of course, from Yorkshire, England, who's going to be helping us understand what this is all about and how it's different from graphene oxide. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Debbie. That's reduced graphene oxide there. Job done. Goodbye. All right, we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think probably we, we owe our viewer a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, uh, reduced graphene oxide is it's a consequence of how some graphene is made. So you'll remember that um, you, we've got graphite. Yes. Right. And graphene is just one of the layers in here. And there are a number of ways that we can tear the graphene apart. Uh, the graphite apart to get the graphene out. One of them is called uh, the Hummers method. And this is a chemical way of tearing apart the layers. And it uses very strong acids and very strong oxidizing agents. And what happens is that um, the acids and the oxidizing agents get in between these layers. It's called intercalating and they force the layers apart. But in doing that, they stick oxygen containing groups all the way around the outside of the platelets and we get graphene oxide coming out. Now, you'll remember that uh, graphene looks like that. Yes. Flat sheet. However, graphene oxide, very similar, except it has all these red and white groups around the outside. And we did talk about these in detail in another one of our videos, so I won't really go into that in too much detail now, Debbie. Um, but can you get how, when you've got strong acids and strong oxidizing agents, that this is what you get coming out? Sure, that's the, um, the hydrogen and the oxygen. Very good, yes, yes, quite right. And the thing is that if you look at this from the point of view of water, so you remember water is H2O, so we got two hydrogens, those are white ones, and oxygen is the red one. And from, from water's viewpoint, when it, it looks at that, can you see how it sees similar things around the edge? Sure, so it can connect. Yeah, so, so it, it's, it can connect, sort of. Uh, what happens is, it, it, um, this means that graphene oxide will disperse better in water than graphene itself, because there's nothing which water can recognize here. Right. A little bit like oil and water mixing. So graphene itself won't mix with water, but graphene oxide does. Um, why is that important? Well, um, if you want to sort of handle graphene, then you can you can handle it as a powder, like that one again. It's, it's safely in its tube. Or uh, if you've got graphene oxide, then it'll disperse in water much better. Okay. And if that was just pure graphene, it would just, it wouldn't mix, it would just all settle out. So the fact that there's a little bit of uh, these red and white groups around the edge helps it disperse in uh, water media. Uh, why is that important? Um, because um, you can mix this with a variety of things, not just water, you can mix it with polymers and uh, it would, particularly things like polyvinyl alcohol, polyvinyl acetate, um, that will mix better with those PVA ones than graphene would. But the problem here is that the graphene oxide itself uh, doesn't conduct electricity very well. So if you can imagine this is some graphene and coming up against some more graphene. Can you see how they can sort of overlap or butt up against one another? And mm -hmm. the electrons can whiz through the sheet and jump from one plate to another. And that's how graphene tends to uh, be electrically conductive. However, can you see that when we've got the graphene oxide here that um, it, these oxygen containing groups get in the way and stop the platelets from coming together. So it stops the electric current from passing from one plate to the other. So they can't play past the parcel with electricity as easily as graphene can. That's why graphene oxide doesn't conduct electricity. Okay, all so right. So what about reduced graphene oxide? Let's go back and just going to share my screen for a minute. So now you can see you recognize this as graphene oxide, Debbie. Yes. And this is the oxidation process um, where it's sticking these groups on. Now, the reduction process 
is the exact opposite of the oxidation process. So if the, the oxidation process is sticking these oxygen containing groups on, reduction means pulling them off. And you can do that in a number of ways. So we go from graphene oxide back to graphene again. And we could use heat. We could use ascorbic acid. I think you're probably familiar with that, Lee, don't you? Uh, citrus. Citric acid, perfect, yeah. It, fruit juice. Uh, in fact, I think somebody's probably done some graphene reduction, graphene oxide reduction with fruit juice, probably. Um, you've got more aggressive agents like sodium borohydride, there's hydrazine and other things, other agents. If um, viewers want to follow this link down here, then that will take them to the Royal Society of Chemistry webpage. Uh, with a paper on this, uh, but we're not going to go into that level of detail here. But do you get the idea at the minute that you can oxidise graphene to turn it from graphite into graphene oxide to handle it, but then we can reduce it back again? Right. I, I, yes, absolutely. What might you do with that? Well, if we just have a look at this um, one example here, we've got some graphene oxide nanoplates in water, so it's that stuff. So it's easy to handle. There are no dusts and uh, less sort of uh, respiratory problems. So that's handy. Um, and then we've got a polyvinyl edene fluoride. This is a, an experiment that's actually been done, these polymer beads, and they're fed into a heated screw press. So this bit down the bottom here uh, represents um, a screw press which will squidge the, uh, the polymer and the water together. Okay. And what happens is that the graphene oxide and the polymer mixed together and then it's heated and as well as some of the water coming off from the graphene oxide also the graphene oxide decomposes back to water vapor reducing it back to graphene uh, reduced graphene oxide what that means is you can use graphene oxide to handle the graphene um, and then you can reduce it down back to reduce graphene oxide and that will then make this polymer composite here electrically conductive that's fantastic. So we've taken it and um, and done it, added the um, the oxygen, the water to it in order to make it disperse best. So yeah. it's then then go back and heat it, or use the the various solutions in order to make it electrically conductive. Exactly. Yes. Okay. All right. And then we can make electrically conductive polymers. We can do one other thing as well, and um, some researchers have been doing this. So if you can imagine that, um, I'll use my mouse mat, if you have this um, um, as a surface here, you can make, um, you could spread the, the graphene, in, graphene oxide in water onto the surface, and you could put a, a binder in there, PVA or something, um, and then let the surface dry. You've then got graphene oxide, which doesn't conduct electricity, Right. Now, if I get some ink, which has got citric acid in it, the ascorbic acid, and I draw patterns on the ink and then heat it up, though where I've drawn, you've actually got and heated it, it will reduce the graphene oxide. So now we've got trails of reduced graphene oxide, which are electrically conductive. So I can draw circuits. Oh, that's very interesting. It's a whole other way to do circuits. Yeah, and we can make things like um, graphene sensors, graphene field effect transistors that way. There's so many different applications and so many ways to use, even yeah. to develop sensors. Yeah. So, like, I it, would, it would just kind of depend on what you use it for. It would, yeah, yeah. And in fact, there are so many uses that uh, we've missed this one. It was only because one of the viewers pointed it out that suddenly realized, well, actually, yeah, we've, we haven't covered this one. So it'd be really good to talk about it. Yeah. So thank you to our viewer and to the rest of the viewers. Thanks so much for your time, Adrian. You're welcome.